Today on Ham Radio Q&A, I open the mailbag and answer your questions, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9PBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A, a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, this channel, it's on the cusp of 20,000 subscribers. I never really expected that much growth. So thank you so much for your support. You know, I really appreciate it. And I got some exciting news that I want to share with you. So stick around towards the end of the video and we'll get into that. But first, um, we're going to answer a few questions and uh, follow up on two recent videos I produced. You know, first one is on the uh, Chameleon m 2.0 antenna system. And Frank asks, is there a best angle for an inverted V setup? Well, the best angle for an inverted V style antenna is between 90 and 120 degrees. That means for your center support, you know, each leg is going to have to be a, like a 45 to a 60 degree angle, you know, from that center support. Inverted Vs typically work best with longer antennas. Uh, you know, like an 80 or 160 meter dipole style antenna, uh, so you can get that center apex up higher. Um, typically, you know, you really want to get that up about 40 feet for the inverted V to really perform. So if you're working with a shorter antenna, like a 20 meter dipole, you know, you're, then your center support's going to tend to be a, um, you know, shorter, closer to the ground, and you're not really going to get that takeoff angle that and performance that you're really um, going to find effective. Uh, but um, circling back to the Chameleon Impasse 2, you know, the wire portion for this antenna is 73 feet long, so if you want to deploy it in the inverted V uh, configuration, you're going to need a sub center support height of around 18 to 20 feet. You know, this is going to get your apex to about 120 degrees. Uh, that should give you a pretty good um, um, angle of radiation. Next up, uh, Gary and a couple other MPAS users mentioned, you know, great review. I, real I like to watch your videos, and I thought I would clear up a bit of confusion that I noticed, though. I have this antenna system, although I bought the parts separately before they offered uh, the complete kit, and I have both the hybrid mini and the hybrid micro. You referred to the matching transformer as the hybrid micro, when in fact you're demonstrating the hybrid mini. The hybrid micro is much smaller and lighter than the mini, and is much more suited for portable backpacking operations. And the mini that you're using is rated for 250 watts uh, CW and 500 sideband. Uh, but the micro you are, uh, you are not demonstrating is only rated for 50 watts CW and 100 watts sideband. This should remove um, one of your bad points at least, since now you know you have the bigger hybrid mini that you can accept more power. Cheers and 73s. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. The MPAS 2 comes standard with the hybrid micro, and evidently I received a uh, hybrid mini transformer. Uh, while not comparing these uh, those two units side by side, I didn't realize I was working with the bigger unit. So chalk that up to my unfamiliarity with the Chameleon product line. But, you know, my review still stands as the Hybrid Micro is a standard component of the Chameleon m 2. Um, so if you're looking for uh, something for full power operation, you know, 100 watts or more, QRO, then you might want to consider upgrading to the hybrid mini transformer as it's going to give you better, you know, more output than the hybrid micro will. Bentley says, nice video. I've been following your channel for some time. Any thoughts on the m 2 might compare with the MP1 super antenna, especially for um, soda or poda ops? I've been eyeing both of these. Thanks in 73s. Well, the MP1 Super Antenna is a screwdriver style vertical antenna. An external tuner isn't necessary for its operation. You know, you slide the sleeve up and down uh, to get a good match for your frequency. Uh, the MPAS has a non adjustable transformer. So while it's good at getting your SWR down to about two to one or so ac across the various bands, uh, you're going to need a tuner for those fine adjustments. You know, I don't own the MP1, but I do have the uh, Wolf River Silver Bullet 1000, which is of a similar design. So I'm going to do a comparison video of these two systems, you know, between the MPAS 2 and the Silver Bullet 1000, and it, that may help you in your decision between these two different styles of antennas. So watch for it in the coming weeks. John has a great suggestion. I own the previous versions of the MPAS and it works well, upgraded to the 2.0 and also the various mill whips and the mill whip extension. 
uh, continuing on in his message. Um, the Millix tennis are stout, which is great, but I, I didn't mention that the Chameleon recommends the ideal NOAA LOX 4.0 antioxidant count. A four, four ounce antioxidant compound at all joints, you know, before their assembly. Um, my mill whip and a mill extension sections were very snug out of the box, and I'm not sure if I could have gotten them apart without using some Nolox. Well, thanks for that recommendation. And you are correct, um, the Chameleon instructions do recommend uh, using some antioxidant compound like Nolox or OxGuard. As, and, and that's a great addition to the kit. Um, I do have some and I forgot to edit in the kit for the first video. And this will aid in the assembly and disassembly. And it's also um, gonna protect the components if, you're, if you've got them de deployed for uh, longer periods of time. The antioxidant compounds, they're available in the electrical section of your local home improvements store. And they're only a couple dollars a tube. So yeah, throw one of those into your kit. Uh, Ross uh, says, um, I own this antenna and it performs very well. I made some modifications. I substituted RG58 co coax for the RG8X, and I also built multiple radios of various lengths instead of the standard 20-foot cable. You know, I really like your suggestions. Uh, the RG58 is sufficient for HF operation, but I think 8X is a little more easier to work with without giving mu up much in weight and size. In the instructions, Chameleon recommends additional radials for better performance, and uh, they sell a counterpoise kit, which comes with three more 25-foot uh, radial sections. You know, but in reality, uh, you can just make up your own. Um, just cut up some 14 to 18 gauge uh, stranded wire at um, various lengths, and you're good to go. Now, Jeff makes this observation. You know, I thought Wisconsin was flat. You know what, Jeff, you're thinking of Illinois. Now we've got hills that the glaciers made by depositing stuff when they melted and other hills that the glaciers missed. Rib Mountain, where I operated from, is 1,923 feet tall and is actually the third highest point in the state. But it does have the highest height above average terrain of those other, between those other two points. So you do get a really nice view of the, um, of the terrain from Rib Mountain. Finally, concerning the impasse 2, I received a couple more critical comments similar to this. Well, the antenna really can't be a good antenna. Even with a tuner, an antenna cannot be efficient with such a wide bandwidth and small size. Your forward RF power is turned into heat in the matching transformer, no different than several other antennas on the market. And with a high price point, unless you're running a continually changing frequency such as ale or other spread spectrum, spread spectrum you know, it's not really worth the cost and inefficiency. You know, all I can say about this is I've always said that antennas are a trade-off. You do give up a bit of efficiency for portability, and I'm not advocating that this is a do-all antenna perfect for every situation. You know, there are hundreds of different antenna designs and styles on the market, and each one best suited for a different purpose. You know what the best antenna is? It's the one that gets you on the air. So in defense of Chameleon, what makes their higher price point worth it is the quality of the antenna and, the detail, and their, their attention to detail. This antenna is, con, is constructed out of better material than some others on the market. So, you know, you, you're going to need to take that into consideration. On my video on uh, ham radio everyday carry items, I received a lot of suggestions on how to improve the kit. So I'm going uh, to kind of run down on some of the list of these other add-ons that you might want to carry in your own kit. Some recommendations are a non-contact voltage tester, a little telescoping antenna, coax adapters, electrical tape, um, a stop the bleeding kit, like with a tourniquet and chest seals, Torx bits, uh, that write in rain paper so you can, you can uh, write notes in the rain, the Zebra F701 uh, tactical pen with the space, Fisher Space Pen cartridge, that's a neat combination. And finally, my favorite, the City Rake and Tension Rods for picking locks. That's one I'm gonna add in my kit. You know, this kit, this is what works for me, and you know, really should be a jumping off point for you. As time goes on, you know, I'm gonna be making some minor changes or additions to it. I did get a couple recommendations for uh, multi-tools though. You know, one is the Leatherman Squirt ES4. This model replaces the uh, pliers in my Gerber dime with a, a set of wire strippers. That's not really a bad idea, and I may test that one out. Another is the, Le the Leatherman Rev. The Rev is much bigger and will add a little bit of bulk to your kit, so you might want to take that into consideration. Uh, myself, I'm more of a Swiss Army knife guy, and I usually carry one of those in my pockets, but 
as um, I need, sometimes I need to travel through security like at our county courthouse. Now I've opted for a tactical key on my key ring instead. This gives me a bottle opener, screwdriver, and a package opener among some other tools. And it is, it's security safe. So links to it and other products mentioned are you can be found in that video description below. Well, before we wind down this month's uh, Q&A video, I just wanted to take a moment and uh, share a couple things with you. You know, first off, I've got merch um, down below this video. You know, you, if you're watching it on YouTube, of course, uh, you'll find some things for sale like coffee mugs and stickers. Uh, you can also show your support by picking one of those up. And I'll be adding more products as time goes on. So if there's anything you'd like to see, you know, let me know. The second is that coming up this month uh, will be a few more product review videos, so stay tuned for those. Um, I'll have the second part of my Redivis portable repeater video coming up, and um, my also big comparison video between the Chameleon M-Pass vertical and the Wolf River Silver Bullet 1000 coil. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. Plus I got some other uh, things in the hopper. Uh, and if you got any suggestions for video ideas, you know, feel free to pass those along. I'd love to hear them. And finally, like I said, you know, we're on the verge of hitting 20,000 subscribers. So, yeah, you know, I'm looking to do something fun and special to celebrate. Uh, I'm planning maybe like a live stream video or an ask me anything type video. I'm sure there, you know, there's plenty of questions you want to know about me. You know, like uh, my favorite operating mode, um, what I do in real life, or what type of beer I drink. You know, I anticipate that um, we're going to hit this milestone right around the Labor Day area. So look forward to that. Well, that's it for this month's questions and answers. Please keep them coming. Uh, leave a comment below. I like to filter through those and keep that conversation going. And who knows, maybe your question will show up on a future uh, Your Questions Answered video. For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpole-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so a few things you can do for me. One is always that big thumbs up, I appreciate that. Check out some of the other videos that are um, recommended alongside me here. And also, if you haven't already done so, please press that subscribe button and the little bell to be notified so uh, you'll know when uh, future videos are released. Well, that's it for this uh, time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.